Hi, Brett. Hi, Kristen. Welcome to the Superhuman Mind blog. Today we're going to talk about um, a drug called ketamine and how it's recently become a popular or a more popular treatment for um, depression. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 somewhat puzzling, right? Because it's uh, used in, in, in anesthesia, um, both for animals and for for humans, um, and it's it's uh, FDA approved as an anesthetic. So I just looked at the paperwork of of the doc I just got, and um, and the anesthetic they used uh, when he got neutered uh, was actually ketamine. Okay, and so. How does it? How does that drug uh, relate to depression treatment? So that's the, that's the, the that's what's so counterintuitive about it because it affects some of the receptors that obviously knock you out, right? And so if you were thinking like, if it worked like an anesthetic, you should almost become more depressed or fall asleep or something. Maybe people work like a sleeping pill or whatever. But the thing is that you use rather high doses when you use it as an anesthetic. And uh, 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 drugs can work on different receptors depending on the dose. So just like some of the uh, third generation antidepressants that work on serotonin and norepinephrine, some of them um, only work on serotonin at low doses and mm. then at higher doses they work on both serotonin and norepinephrine. So with ketamine, when you go down in the dose, then um, what what happens? The one theory what is what that it has an effect on glutamate, which is an excitatory uh, neurotransmitter, and that that can affect um, the, your mood and brain and energy. Um, and and I have an alternative theory that is a possibility as well. So. It's, it, it actually also at lower doses, well, I guess also at higher doses, but you wouldn't feel it. But at lower doses, it also works uh, uh, in, in much the same way as cocaine works, except that it's more long, it's longer lasting. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to give cocaine to a person who's depressed because it would last, what, an hour, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they would be not depressed for an hour, and then mm -hmm. they would be more depressed afterwards. But this seems to have a mechanism uh, where it works on serotonin, dopamine, um, and norepinephrine, um, which can all be worked as excitatory chemicals and as reward chemicals. And so it may be that it's that's a mechanism of action. So that's another possibility that hasn't been explored. Uh, that it just sort of is like a slow, a really slow working cocaine, cocaine or long lasting cocaine, in some sense. And imagine take cocaine, which will last for like uh, an hour, right? Um, uh, because it's very, very short, short working. Uh, and imagine that you get ketamine and it lasts for like three weeks, but it's not as intense. Mm -hmm. um, something like that. Uh, so. Why, why is it called a miracle drug for depression? Um, why do you, I th well, I think it's because it's, it's seems to be, um, in some case they've seen it work on individuals who are, are seem to be resistant to the other types of standard treatment, right? So, um, people who try multiple SSRIs or, uh, and actually follow the, regimen properly sometimes still don't uh, see their depression relieved but it it seems like in some cases ketamine could kind of boost that you know kind of kickstart the that whole system and um and successfully treat the depression yeah what's really amazing i think is also that uh they they, they sometimes think that is a negative fact but the thing is that uh, right now it's given as injections because they, they want to monitor people and so on because it's not mm. FDA approved. But you can actually also give it as a pill. It can be absorbed in uh, three different ways. Okay. Well, actually many different ways. I mean, you could also snort it, but that's not likely to be a medical way to, right. to administer it. But you can actually also um, you can absorb it through the stomach. So mm. if it became FDA approved for depression, you could just have this pill 
and you would know that the right dose and so on uh, because there would be all these studies on it and and you wouldn't have to take it every day mm. right so you only have to take it every couple of weeks or every few weeks um they sometimes take that as a negative fact yeah i can see that that's negative if you have to like oh make the whole trip into the doctor and you know get monitored while you get your injections with ketamine you know but imagine like having to not take a drug until like almost like once a month mm -hmm. instead of every day right, right. um so it's a, that, that seems like a positive thing and it seems that it lifts people's depression suicidal depression within one to two hours okay is a that's that's just amazing I mean, I'm a lot of people are questioning the drug, but mostly because they're worried about the side effects. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the other antidepressants have side effects, serious side effects, and so it's just a, a matter of like um, getting some money to fund some studies. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem, though, is because it's already FDA approved. The pharmaceutical companies are not very interested in in funding the clinical trials mm -hmm. because there's no patents to be had on it. Mm -hmm. You can't patent a drug that's already approved by the FDA. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's why it's really difficult to get some studies running on ketamine. Is it is it approved for depre treatment for depression though, or is it? Just, no, it's not okay. FDA approved for that. But you, any doctor can prescribe it off label. Okay. And when is when a drug is approved for anything, uh, it is FDA approved as an anesthetic. Mm -hmm. When a drug is approved, FDA approved for one thing, you mm -hmm. can always prescribe it off label for something right, else. Right. You but, just have to be willing to do it. But then I think also if you if you can demonstrate a new, if you can if you can, uh, if you do a successful clin clinical trial on an, on an off label use. And it becomes on label. I think that you can patent it for um, for that new use under a new drug name. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. I, I'm not. I'm not uh, familiar with the with the patent law uh, system. But um, but so. But I heard the argument that that the uh, pharmaceutical companies didn't want to uh, put a lot of money into it because doctors can already prescribe it if mm -hmm. they want to. Yeah, and I think and I think. That they uh, that th because of the controversy surrounding it right now, there would potentially be a lot of red tape to getting it a, a on label approval for um, f for using this traditional anesthetic as a as for something else. Because I think there's a there probably will be a lot. I think a lot of people are concerned that there's an addictive potential to it, um, or that it would be dangerous. Um, it's Probably somewhat addictive because it does have those properties of cocaine, but it wouldn't be as addictive as, say, cocaine. Mm -hmm. right? Because cocaine is so addictive because it's so intense. But ketamine is, is, is slower working and not quite as intense. Mm -hmm. So the addiction potential would not be as bad. And even as our eyes, which are supposed to not be addictive, are in some sense addictive because when people try to wean themselves off them, they have all these side effects. So they go back on them, right? Mm -hmm. To avoid the side effects. So. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about the, the addictive potential, but of course that is what, what worries a lot of, um, a lot of people and also a lot of doctors who are unwilling to prescribe it for depressed people. Um, mm. but it's, it, I mean, it's, it's probably healthier, uh, to get one shot of ketamine every very low dose every three weeks then to pop these pills every day is our mm. eyes and and which we don't even know how really we don't we, we know they work on serotonin but we don't really know which other things they do or what they do mm. to the body and the brain and so yeah so I'm, I'm very optimistic about it of course uh we should we should issue a warning because there is a sweet drug called special k which right if it had been a pure form would be ketamine mm -hmm. uh, and the problem is that you don't know what you get if you get it off the street mm -hmm. so you may not you may even be getting ketamine uh right, you may, right. may be getting ketamine with a lot of fillers and uh, bath salts or whatever in it um at all uh, that wouldn't be so bad but um you know rat poison mm -hmm. <laughs> um 
what which tends to be the case with a lot of these uh, these newer street drugs is is companies or, or people who are producing it. And in some cases, some of these street drugs um, are produced by companies. Um, they they don't they 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 change the chemical structure of the drug slightly to try to avoid um, certain types of regulation because the co the the re the regulatory code specifically lists the the molecules in the drug and so companies these this on the a lot of these street drugs now um, even the legal street drugs are only legal because they slightly don't match the uh, right, right, right. That's what the, the whole group is a, is a sort of an umbrella term for a whole group of, of new drugs that's uh, known as bath salts. Right. They have nothing to do with the salt you actually put in your bathtub. <laughs> um, but they are, they are um, they keep coming up with new bath salts. Uh, they, they, they generate these new ones uh, that are just slightly different, mm -hmm. and, and they, but they have the same effect as, as usually stimulant effects. Mm -hmm. Um, euphoric effects, and and they can't you can't really get busted for them because they're not regulated. Right. Um, so so they're very popular because people can sell them and buy them without risking um, any legal issues. Right. And then when they list them, they will just make a modification, and there's a new bath sold out. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are they're seriously on. Um, they're seriously damaging. Uh, the bath salts are seriously damaging, uh, in the sense that they um, they are they are super intense and they can have um, they can actually lead to things like depression and um, serious depression afterwards, with, if you, because you can't keep being on them. So, so it's not it's not worth getting your high from that. It's better to right. drink some coffee. <laughs> That's right. So. Um... So the same thing goes for ketamine too. The 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 street drug may not be the the one that it might not you might not be think you might not get what you think you're getting. Yeah, it might not even work the same way. And if it's a newly modified one, it could work. It could not work. That's what happened with um, ecstasy. Uh, so ecstasy was very popular in what the eighties, nineties. Mm -hmm. I forget. Um, now the, the, the new uh, thing is, is, is molly, and molly is basically supposed to be the pure form of ecstasy, but it's sold in capsules, mm -hmm. and, they, and it's very rare that it actually is uh, ecstasy in, in the United States, in mm -hmm. Europe it's different, but um, it's usually something completely different, and, um, and it's sold under the name Molly, and people think they get ecstasy, but they don't get it. They get something else. Mm -hmm. And that's I've seen some people who have actually um, done some studies of some of those capsules. So some of the ones that have been put at, at airports or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, you can do studies on those. Um, and in some cases, it's like really, really a little tiny bit of LSD or something. Mm -hmm. uh, in other cases, it's like bath salts, as we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so yeah, the same with Special K, um, does that, and also you don't know, suppose you, you do get ketamine, you don't know the dose, mm -hmm. unless, unless it happens to be the pill from some pharmaceutical company where you can mm -hmm. look it up online. You don't know the dose, you might get too much, you might get too high of a dose and go into an anesthesia, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's, uh, that's not... Let's not encourage people to self-medicate for depression. That's totally true. So on that note, where I mean, where can someone go who has who has treatment resistant depression? Um, are there are there studies being done at universities on ketamine or? or... Uh, yeah, so that's a, I think the, there's a, a least this, um, a, at least there's at least a psychiatrist at Yale University mm -hmm. that. Uh, is very much in favor of giving ketamine to depressed people, uh, but there are there are um, psychiatrists around the country uh, that are willing to do it, uh, and some are uh, utterly unwilling to do it. Mm -hmm. Some people are very divided. So if Yale is too far away, since it's like northeast, uh, it might be worth like asking a psychiatrist uh, whether they would be willing to do it. Or alternatively, you could um, alternatively you could um, you can look up ketamine clinics. So there are ketamine 
uh, clinics um, that you can look up what that will actually, you know, come, have you come in, give you the injection. Um, some people do it in, you know, mus muscular in the muscle mm -hmm. uh, because it can be absorbed that way as well. And then they monitor you, your heartbeat and your blood pressure and so on. And, and then... And then you, you don't need to come in for a couple of weeks or a few weeks. Um, and I haven't heard anyone, or read, I should say, I haven't read about anyone having, who have gone, do, done it that way, mm -hmm. who have had negative experiences with it. Mm -hmm. um, they, some people do complain that it doesn't last that long, but if you think about it, I mean, that is kind of long. If you pop one SSRI, even if you have gone through the six weeks of, getting your body to, you know, respond to them, it's not like you can pop one and then wait three weeks to pop the next one, right? So, right. Um, so yeah, so that's that's Yale University, if you're anywhere near Yale University, there's, um, there's some, um, they do some experimentation, but also, they also are willing to prescribe it. Okay. Well, it's a really prom. It looks like a really promising area for treatment for a lot of people who really need yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's a super exciting. Well, it was good to talk to you. It was good to talk to you. Thanks for watching.